Uh, explain to the officers uh, what they need to look out for. Um, <clears throat> A lot of these officers that are doing this are, are seasoned veterans. They've been doing this for a long, long time. It's just kind of good to remind them. In that last slide the Chief put on with the officers in the, uh, in the turtle gear, I was the guy that was wearing the actual turtle gear itself. And I, one of the other officers said, how come you weren't smiling? And I was like, well, it was like 95 degrees, and it was really, really hot. And smiling was the last thing on my mind. So we just want to remind the officers it's going to be hot out there. And sometimes when the heat gets to you, you start getting a little bit antsy and all that other stuff. Don't be that guy. That's, uh, that's kind of like what we titled this. Um, I'm sure in your offices where you guys work, you all have that guy. That, you know that one guy. It might be some of you in here, I don't know. But, um, you know, you have that one guy that you, everybody knows him. Oh, that's so and so, yeah. Well, we don't want our officers to be that guy where the stories come out and, oh, yeah, that guy. So that's what we're trying to avoid by this. Take a look at this video. I'm going to ask you a couple questions on what you think about it for just a second here. Basically, what we do is we, we show the officers that, and we ask them for we ask them what they think. Because this is written in, in the very beginning of their training. We show them this. Now, I I've put on this class a few times. I've seen more YouTube videos of protesters, and I I, I have nightmares about this stuff. Um, but we actually show them that. We ask them what they think. Some of the officers say, "Oh, they, the cops were wearing sunglasses. That looks kind of intimidating." Other ones say, "Well, that guy had that 40 millimeter launcher. He's pointing right at the guy." Um, if you listen to what they're saying, the, the crowd is chanting, they say get back, we say fight back, is what they're actually saying. Uh, one of the things we explain to the officers is when we're trying to break up a crowd like that, we want to go for the weakest link of that chain. You know, we don't want to get the guys that are all working out every day. We probably want to get the smaller people to start breaking that chain um, because then you can easily arrest them. I, the way I look at that video is I think they all acted very, very professionally. You don't hear them cursing at them, screaming or yelling. You don't see anybody kick in or punching anything like that. They do exactly what they were trained to do. Well, we explained to the officers for their goals for the, uh, for the RNC. We have the responsibility to uphold the First Amendment rights in assembly of speech. We live in the greatest country in the world because of the rights that we have, and we want to make sure that we protect those rights. People have the, the right to you know, voice their opinion. We want to make sure that is, that's protected. Um, one of the issues that we explained to them is we've got people that join these groups of peaceful protesters because they're here solely to create havoc. They're here specifically to start damaging property. Um, I think it's kind of funny because I watched one video where this group was destroying a Wells Fargo and then I did some research and it turns out that they have their bank account with Wells Fargo. So it kind of, I didn't really understand that or somebody just didn't get on that email chain about who they were using that bank with that week. Um, violations of rights, Fourth Amendment, un unreasonable search and seizure. We also explained to them that we don't want to be violating anybody's rights. Uh, but then we go on to tell them because we're trying to have a, a you know, a, a kind of like an understanding approach. We don't want to go out there and just start knocking people's heads in. So we explain to them that we're not, you know, they're not expected to tolerate blatant law violations, but they're supposed to be using some good judgment on what they're going to be doing. Um, I can tell you this, that from the chief and the sheriff, they have explained to the officers and they've explained to the training staff that, um, you know, we are not going to be victims out there for these, for these protesters. Um, we're going to maintain order. Uh, we're going to maintain peace. We're not going to get beat up out there. That's one thing that was conveyed to me and that I made sure I conveyed to all the officers. Because they're kind of, a lot of these guys have never even seen any of this stuff before, so they're kind of concerned about it. We're going to show you a video one time, and I, I got into a pretty heated argument with a trooper down in West Palm when I was down there training them. He goes, ah, oh, and I explained it to him, and he saw it my way just because I'm such a such a good speaker on that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, with the, 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 a lot of the attendees are going to be peaceful. They're just going to be here because they've got something that they want. You know, they, they're tired of paying taxes or they want an extra 15 minutes break in their day or, you know, maybe put that extra cigarette in a pack or whatever they're protesting. And they have that right. And that, like I said, it's the greatest country in the world because you can do that. Um, but, again, the problem is, is they're going to have people that 
have that mob mentality. It's like, oh, well, we're just in a big group of people. There's no way we can get in trouble. Let's go smash a window. Let's go set something on fire. We also explain to the officers that the media is going to be here. There's going to be a lot of media here. Um, I love the media, personally. Um, in all honesty, though, I like the fact that there's cameras everywhere. We tell them there's going to be cameras everywhere, which records everything, specifically what the protesters are doing, the officers response to what the protesters are doing, stuff like that. There's 15,000 credential members of the media that'll be attending. And those are just people that fill out paperwork that said, hey, just so you know, we're coming. We're sure that there's going to be other people that are going to be coming to the, uh, to the RNC. Countless individuals will be present with their own cameras, cell phones, etc. And it's kind of comical. You don't really think about it, but almost everybody has got a camera on their, their cell phone. Um, even if the, the old flip phone my mom has has a camera on it, she doesn't know how to work it, but it's got a camera on the flip phone. So, uh, you know, and I've experienced that because I've only been doing this for 10, 11 years now. And when I first started, camera phones were really not that heard of. And now when I'm out there making arrests and stuff like that, everybody catches it on film. But I like the fact that that happens because it, uh, it keeps everybody, it, there's no question about what happens caught on film. Um, downtown, many officers will have cameras. We've actually got videographers that are actually going to be following with the officers. They're going to have cameras so they can record everything. Um, one of the videos that uh, the chief actually talked about in one of the classes that we were in was where the uh, protester was putting on like some fake blood and they were trying to say that the officers battered them but there was a video of them actually putting the fake blood on so and the blood I guess was the wrong color blood I don't know it was positive or what it was um, and then virtually everything you do be captured on video they're also they're also putting a lot of cameras around downtown so they'll be able to monitor everything downtown um, and then again some of the attendees are just trying to get media coverage they want their 15 minutes of fame this one here, they decided to block the road in uh, in New York City. I don't understand really what this kid is protesting, and maybe he wants a longer nap time in school, but um, <laughs> better hot lunches. We don't really know what they're protesting, but a lot of them just want to get their, their faces on the news. They want to get a picture of them. They want to be on the 8 o'clock or the 11 o'clock news or the 10 o'clock news or whatever the, the situation is. And then once they have their picture taken, they see the media is there, some of them are going to get up and leave. Other ones aren't going to leave. And that's what we explain to the officers, that they just want to, they just want to get captured on film being arrested. That's what they want. And then, okay, I'm happy I got captured on film being arrested. I accomplished my goal. Um, what their goal was, I don't know. And then again, like I had mentioned earlier, we explained to them that some of the attendees are just trying to get the officers to react. This one here, I don't really know um, where the, I, we found a bunch of slides on the internet, and I don't know the whole story behind this. And I, you know, I joke with the officers because I try to make this as fun as I possibly can. Uh, we don't know what the heck this guy's doing, but he's obviously in somebody's face yelling, or he was complaining about something, or might have had some bad Thai food the night before. We don't really know, but um, some of them will just be annoying. And we hear these stories all the time about these, these things with the flowers. Um, I can say that if I'm just standing there and somebody walks up and hands me a flower, that's not going to be annoying. But if I'm standing on a line for two hours in 95 degree temperatures with all that gear on and then somebody's sticking a flower in my face that's probably the last thing i want to see is a flower being stuck in my face and one of the stories we tell the officers is uh, there's actually a, a, a picture of an officer smacking a girl's hand with a flower he had a, a protester in front of him antagonizing 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 the whole time trying to get a rise out of him and then all of a sudden a girl reaches over the guy's shoulder and hands him like to hand the officer a flower well the officer is concentrating on this guy who's really trying to get him riled up so he just sees a hand coming at him and he batters a hand, you know, he bats the hand away for, to protect himself. We try to explain to the officers that that's what they're going to do. They're just going to try to be annoying. If you guys heard in that one slide, they were um, chanting that shame on you, shame on you, shame on you. And I've heard that so much. And I have begged that when I'm out there, um, if I could put my earbuds in and maybe just listen to some classical music, um, I think they fear I might be listening to some Five Finger Death Punch or something. Uh, um, where I'm assigned for the RNC, you saw that the, the riot gear, I'm not actually going to be in that. I'm going to be on a bicycle. And I try to explain it because I put on another class with the officers showing them all the equipment that they're going to get. I don't get any of that equipment. I get a helmet and some gloves and a bicycle. So um, <laughs> the, the, they all kind of make fun of me because I'm going to pull up and bling, bling, hey, we're here to stay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get the, the cool ride here, but I get a bicycle with a bell on it. Um, but I, I was told I'm not allowed to use the siren, so I should just make it sound like <laughs> um, And then you know, the other debating, they have, uh, they've got some camps that are all over the state, actually, where people that own a lot of property are letting a lot of these protesters actually camp out. And they have classes, they have lawyers that come, they have ex-judges that come, and they actually educate them on what they can and cannot do. They, like I said, they will explain to them exactly what they can do. They teach the protesters 
the same thing that we know, what a battery is, what a bat Leo is, all these things, and say, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. You can do this, and if you get arrested, then you're going to be able to make a, a, a house payment. Take a look at this video. It's kind of Okay, um, one of the things I find funny is that guy picked the tallest guy <laughs> on that line. Um, I understand he's making a statement with the hair, but I don't know what he's thinking picking the tallest guy in that line. And again, in some of these videos, we don't have the whole story behind him. It's kind of a um, kind of a makeshift line. They're not really stopping anybody because people could pass through if they wanted to. There's some uh, photographers behind him taking pictures. But obviously that guy had something that he wanted to say to the, the biggest cop that was out there. Um, <laughs> And we explained to them that that's exactly what they're trying to do. You saw he was getting up in the, in the officer's face. He was getting close. He was kind of making some aggressive moves toward the officer. But the officer maintained his composure. And that's what we try to point out to these guys, that it's important to do that. Um, because he's just trying to get him to do something. You know that that guy wanted that. I, I'm assuming he picked the biggest guy so that if he did get hurt, he'd just get knocked out and wouldn't feel anything after that. But, you know, he... he He's trying to get that officer to respond, and we explained to them that the officer didn't respond. He didn't really have to respond, so that was an appropriate response by the officer. Uh, we also explained to them that it's a world event on a world stage. This is going to, you know, this is bigger than, than Tampa. This is bigger than Florida. This is even bigger than just the U.S. This is the entire world, and we explained to them that. You know, I, I tell them all the time. I say, don't be that guy that is on some news show in, you know, Asia with the scrolling thing going across that I can't read because I throw away all my fortunes. Don't be, no, don't be that guy, because this is going to be worldwide. Um, we also explain the perception and um, how it's a snapshot in time. You know, you take a picture and that's just a snapshot in time. Uh, I've, I've only been doing this for a little while, but I'm pretty confident I know what's happening in this picture. Um, that looks like a downswing, that looks like an upswing, and that looks like target acquisition there. Um, but we don't know. This guy here that is dressed kind of like a, a teddy bear might be battering this person. Um, he might have battered the officers. We try to explain to them, and the, one of the big things that I tell them to do is do the right thing the right way for the right reason, and you won't have a problem. That doesn't just apply to the RNC, that applies to life, really. But I, I try to tell them that because it's one of those things where if you have to take action, as long as you can explain why you took action, if someone was battering you and you had to take them into custody, and while you're taking them into custody they resisted with violence, and you had to use force to get them under control, okay, you can explain that. But if you're just arbitrarily beating someone, that's probably a no-no, right? That's some, probably something that we don't want to happen. Again, the perception thing. Uh, this is kind of funny because we've got this uh, this lady here holding the sign. Um, from what I understand, this one is a uh, she's a member of this group called uh, Grannies Without Panties. Um, <laughs> I think it's kind of self-explanatory, so I don't really have to explain what their claim to fame is. Um, <laughs> She is obviously protesting something. I, I don't know what's on her, her sign. Maybe um, for them is better than, than, you know, something else. But what we try to explain to the officers is if you look right here, there's like a bicycle barricade right here. She's on one side of it. This officer's kind of got her in a headlock on the other side of it. And then there's three other officers that are over here. Now, she might have just hit somebody with that sign or she might have done something. We don't really know. But again, we explain it that the perception is everything. Just because something happened one way and it was captured on film and it looks another way, you have to be able to understand that and you have to be able to explain what you were doing. Again, snapshots in time. Um, I teach at the police academy. I teach defensive tactics. That's handcuffing. That's, you know, uh, carries. It's takedown, stuff like that. I have never taught this move. <laughs> I, don't really, I don't really know what that is. Um, I, I would even venture to guess what that is. And, uh, you know, in the class, the officers go, yeah, she's smiling now. And I go, yeah, she's smiling. She is smiling because that she just made a, a ton of money. And that's, you know, she cha-ching, cha-ching. I'm making a fortune now, you know. So, but it could have been one of those things where maybe he was holding her around the waist and it slipped up. 
It's just a snapshot in time. That's why you have to be very, very careful what we, what we do. We explain it. And then this one here, I don't really know how I can explain this one. It looks like he slapped her, um, but he, she might have uh, headbutted him in the face and he was pushing her away. I don't know if you guys ever saw that movie National Security with Martin Lawrence and the other guy where he's swatting the bee and it looks like he's just beating up Martin Lawrence with the, uh, with the baton. So we explain them as a snapshot in time. And to, again, right thing, right way for the right reason. You shouldn't have any problem. Um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Safe to say they're probably going to get cold this year for Christmas. But um, again, another tactic that the protesters will do, they get somebody, they'll dress them up. Obviously, you, if, you, if I see Santa Claus in downtown Tampa, that guy's probably there to get arrested because that is something that is going to get media attention and the officers are going to look bad because they're arresting Santa Claus. You know? They're going to be on the 11 o'clock news, Daddy, Daddy, why did you arrest Santa Claus? You know? Well, that wasn't really Santa Claus, it was one of his helpers, honey. So, um, you know, that's probably, but we explain to them that they're going to do that. They, they want to be noticed. They want this to, they want their 15 minutes of fame. And then uh, this one here, I show them good shot or excessive force. And it usually takes a second for everybody to see it. And then all of a sudden you hear everybody go, oh, right? You all saw that? So this lady here is getting a nice shot of Tanaka. Um, that's the, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's the pepper spray. We don't really know what happened there. You know, maybe she had just thrown a bag of something at the officers and they're getting ready to arrest her. Maybe they're getting ready to start an offensive onto that line. We don't really know what happened. But again, we ask, is it a good shot or is it an excessive use of force? Well, we don't know. We don't know the story behind it. But a lot of times what will happen is protesters will just take something, edit it, and then make sure it gets on YouTube or make sure it gets somewhere so that it's public. And then it looks like we were in the wrong when really we were in the right. And that's why a lot of times that camera, like I said, we're going to have cameras all over downtown. And that's fantastic because that protects us if we have to do something. Appropriate reactions. Um, Again, like I had said, they tell them exactly what they can do and can't do, and they're trying to push buttons. They know we're going to be out there hot. We, they know it's going to be 90 degrees. I'll be honest with you. I'll be shocked to see who shows up for this because I know that if I wasn't in downtown Tampa on my bicycle, I'd probably be on my porch in my pool because it's going to be so hot. So I don't really know who's going to show up for it. Um, it it's going to be hot out there, but they, under, they understand that, and they're going to try to get you, or they're going to try to get the officers to give them a, a, a response that's going to make them some money. Take a look at this video and you know, I've got some comments on this one. Okay, so when the officers see that, they all make that same, oh! <laughs> but then when the cop turns around and walks away, they all start laughing because they think that's hilarious. Here's my issue with that. Um, and uh, there's a, Sergeant Diaz puts on this class as well, and he and I are of the same opinion. I'm, I, I like to think that I'm a cop's cop. I, I, I love cops. I work with a lot of cops. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. But if that was my mom, and some cop walked up to my mom and hit her in the head with a baton for no reason whatsoever, I'm going to jail. I can tell you that right now. Because you're not going to hit my mom, it's my mom. We explain that to the officers. We explain, listen, these are people out there. You know, if you need to take an appropriate, if you have to have a response to some sort of, okay, then you have to have a response. But if you don't, you don't. That there, while it looks kind of funny, I tell them flat out, there's no reason for that. She was yelling. Maybe her son got beat up and she was, you know, a lot of you guys are parents in here. You would be screaming at whoever you need to scream at because the cop needs to arrest so-and-so for beating up your son or your daughter or whatever the case is. But that lady was just yelling. I don't know what country that was and I don't know what laws they have where you can just hit somebody for saying that. But we explained to them that they need to be very, very careful what they're doing. There's no sound on this video. We probably couldn't understand if they were saying anything. <laughs> So this guy here, he comes up with a stick and he tries attacking the officers with a stick, and then they retake, they retaliate with their with their shields. And this gentleman, he again <coughs> tries to attack them with a stick, but now he's just standing there holding that, that stick out to them. Oh! oh. oh. Right. So with that and with that video, um, that that guy actually he died from that. He actually died from that. Um, we don't have those shields. And I teach the training classes for the shields, and we don't teach them any of that stuff. 
So rest assured that that's absolutely not. We actually go through the areas that they can strike and the areas they can't strike, and we specifically tell them the head, the neck, the face, the spine, the groin. That's all, can't touch any of that stuff. We don't expect, none of them are going to do this. I mean, like I said, these guys have been doing this for years, and that's in a completely different country where the laws are completely different, and the police and the citizens have a different <coughs> relationship. But we just explain to them that that cop might have thought that was a great idea at the time, but it turned out to be probably the worst thing that he could have ever done in his career. I mean